right, guys, again, thanks for all the comments. And this one's come up again from one of the new followers. Um, I did cover this in our induction secret series, uh, but they were a little bit long. So I'm just gonna do a dedicated video and explain what the guide fins do, similar like this one. And how they actually have advanced our cylinder head flow, uh, not only our flow numbers, our port efficiency and everything. And it sort of feeds off the videos we've been doing talking about um, irreversible density losses that ports create. And having a guide and or a guide fin and the better the shape it is, the more it reduces these losses, these, these density losses in the port. So I, I thought I'd break down uh, why it does, what, what we're actually trying to achieve with a valve guide, um, like a fin. Uh, you'll see all the modern heads have pretty much got them, especially in the racing two valves. And now we're starting to see it more and more in the um, four valve type stuff that, that have, you know, de depends on the valve port angle with very, very steep intake angles you don't really need it but we're still seeing it on a lot of the exhaust some of the heads that i'm designing i'm putting it into um, i'm seeing it in uh, the jet ski stuff that i'm helping with i'm seeing it in um, small engines that are limited by port room in other words they can't get the port height that they need um, so we're using fins to improve the uh, turn across that uh, across the apex um, so I've done some diagrams just to help people understand. Remember, air's like water or electricity. It wants to take the, the straightest path and we've really got to try and balance those velocities. And I've talked about the optimal shape across the short turn or in the middle, the apex of the short term being a uh, trapezoid because what we want to try and do is accelerate the air along the roof because the distance between uh, the short turn and the long turn uh, it is quite different, meaning for the air to get through the turn, the air on the far side has got to cover more distance to keep up with the um, air on the short turn. So, But the first thing we need to look at is the separation and how it cuts through the air. And we see this on sharks and fishes and everything. The reason why their fins are streamlined is because we want the least amount of drag as possible skin friction, the whole thing, right? Uh, again, we, we have everything from a the drag coefficient of the boundary layer right up to whether it's a bluff body where something like just having a stem is a bluff body versus streamlined body. The streamlined body is gonna have far less drag coefficient, which means we're not gonna get that turbulence, we're not gonna get that separation or that, that the bigger turbulence, the bigger eddies, which create more heat, more friction, and we lose density. We're converting it to heat. So when we have a streamlined guide, it basically splits the air and brings it back together again. Uh, it's not gonna turn and crash into each other. But if we just have a guide by itself, one, we're gonna get air that's gonna bank up on the stem of the guide uh, or the valve. And then we're gonna get air that's gonna wrap around and collide. We're gonna get more uh, intermolecular collision, which is also gonna push our temperature up because the more those molecules collide, the more heat we make and the more we lose uh, density out of the air because we're converting it to temperature. Um, so. In these two scenarios, the, the one with the guide is always gonna flow more. And there's another aspect, because the flow bench can confuse you, because I have had this flow better on the bench. So you can cut guides out and they will sometimes flow better on the flow bench. But there's a couple of aspects we've got to look at. They might only flow three or four CFM more, but you've taken five cc's out of the port. Um, Meaning that port now, if it was 200 cc's, it's now 205. So we realistically, we need um, you know eight c eight cfm more to to actually be not just equal in front, and, and that's the drama. If we're increasing port volume when we do it, we can't look at the same flow figures and say same same because that port is now bigger, uh, and that's the other aspect of the um, the vein or, or the port fin that 
is a win-win. Not only does it improve our streamlining, it takes CCs out of the port, meaning it increases port efficiency. It becomes smaller and more efficient. The, the, the velocity gradient across the port, so its port efficiency increases with it. And, and there's a few reasons why. Um, again, we've talked about shape. So if you've really got a really, really poor short turn, um, you're gonna have this turbulence up in the roof. You're gonna have it on the floor and you're gonna have it off the short turn because the air is just gonna try and skip off that, right? So this is the shape we wanna create. So the fin or the guide support is doing two things here. One, it's reducing the area in the top half of the port, right? So if we split that in half, there's less area in this half than there is in this half. And then we can also play with the heights of these to help um, stimulate swirl in, in two valve engines, but that's another, another topic. But by reducing how much volume we've got in the top of it, we can increase the velocity across the roof. And by widening the floor, we can slow that down here so that as this air wave pitches, it pitches together and that improves port efficiency dramatically again. And as you can see, um, without all this guide in here, that would be all dead air and the air would be going slower. And then we start creating inverse eddies turning back this way um, or, or tripping the air because this air is in front of those air streams. So it wants to fill in. So this is why we have the guides in the head and this is why the baddie seat in nascar anything um i just showed you a set of cleveland um uh kazi 400s c400 heads uh anything where they've put some time in d3s all that sort of stuff what they're trying to do is balance the airspeed across there and the only way to balance the airspeed across a bend is have less area in the top half and more in the bottom half that's how we can actually slow it down over the short turn. That's why the mouth of the short turn will widen depending on how bad the short turn is. So the more angle we have, the, the more, the wider the short turn needs to be uh, and vice versa, the less angle. That's why you look at the, the twin cams now that are like this. It's pretty much round through the port now. We, we don't need to compensate at all. Um, you, maybe a little bit of flattening on some of the 15 degrees. So I'm talking between seat angle and port angle. There's always going to be something because the, the valve stem, the port can't go straight up parallel to the valve stem. So there's always going to be a little bit. But the closer we get that uh, port angle to valve angle, um, the, the less we need to do this unless we need to compensate with the air to try and make sure the the uh, long side keeps up with the short side right so that that's what it's all about hopefully that helps but yeah again this is where we lose port efficiency so with any porting we've got to be really really careful it's like people that put bigger valves in and float and goes oh look we made eight cfm with the you know the 2.1 instead of a uh, 202 or something like that. But you've got to take the ratios of what, how big a throat you put in, what sort of port volume it's got in it now. And these are great because a port thin takes volume out of the port, improves that streamline, reduces the drag coefficient and improves port efficiency. So anyway, hopefully that covers, covers it guys. I thought I'd do a really, really short one on it because I have covered it in, in it before, but we've had some questions from the new guys about this exact thing. Um, again, anyone that knows me knows I try and keep them where I can, where they're beneficial. If if you've got a tiny little bump in a you know a, a Ford, um, like an XR6 turbo head or something like that, or, or even some of the smaller guides in the 2Js, sometimes you can just knock them out. Again, it, it really just depends. It, we're only talking about half a cc, maybe. So. Um, yeah, these are just things we've got to think about. Anyway, hopefully that uh, helps. Cheers, guys.